there is only war. Hello, nerd. As much as many people like to think that all space marines are the same, it actually couldn't be further from the truth. A simple thing that proves it is if we look at how different were all of the Primarchs, and the legions are just their reflection. Let's start with the Sons of Lion, Dark Angels. Their main strength isn't anything specific, but rather, these bad boys are very versatile. That is the reason why they also possess the most dangerous arsenal of any Space Marine Legion. Have you noticed that the Emperor chose them every time there was some weird dangerous enemy to deal with? That is because they were meant to deal with everything. When Rangdan and Crave emerged, the Dark Angels were the ones to deal with them first. They have Deathwing and Dreadwing, various special squads that are meant to counter literally everything. If you ask them to deal with some type of a threat, they will, since they can't fight any battle. The Emperor's children's main strength was their pursuit of perfection. They treated war like a form of art, creating complex plans to draw out their enemies, deal with insurgencies, fight overwhelming battles with low casualties. At one point, they had some of the most disciplined warriors in the galaxy because of how they tried to perfect themselves in all aspects of war, whether it was hand-to-hand -hand combat, weapons use, or military strategies. At the start of their legion, they were the ones mostly leading Imperial Army units, showing that they are not just capable fighters, but also leaders. But the pursuit of perfection was also their downfall, since they decided to perfect the wrong things like space aids, drug abuse, and rave parties pushing them further into the hands of Slanesh. But it has also a lot to do with the fact that they were reunited with Fulgrim, because the original Emperor's children were Terran-born nobles that respected the Emperor more than their Primarch. These Terran-born Space Marines are the ones with the most character and honor. A shining example of this is Rylanor. Perti's Legion, Iron Warriors, are, I think, one of the most obvious of the bunch. These Space Marines were experts at holding, or more precisely, laying the siege. They were sent on some of the hardest-fought missions. They could crack almost every fortress they came across, but they could also create such fortifications that with just a handful of troops, they were able to hold back thousands upon thousands of enemies. In a sense, they were also one of the cleanest legions and their gene seed was one of the easiest to maintain. The failure rate of its implantation was really low, and even till this day, they have some of the cleanest marines, which is unusual for traitor space marines, except for Alpha Legion, of course. White Scars are weird in a way that many people just assume they are fast as hell, and actually, they are right. They love speed on their jet bikes and in a form of powder, but don't underestimate this line railing menace. Generally, they are fantastic shock troops, capable of having brief, precise encounters and then retreating knowing when to strike and when to pull back. Their strength is not in their numbers, but rather the capacity of deciding the perfect moment to attack. Even in space, their fleet is created in such a way so that it is versatile and hard to combat, putting emphasis on speed and flanking tactics rather than just pure firepower. Just like Emperor's children, many White Scars are capable swordsmen and combatants, but in reality we don't know how actually capable they are, and it is hard to draw a line based on their Primarch because, well, Primarchs are demigods, so it doesn't really count. But look, there is a reason why Lehman Russ is called Executioner. His legion knows how to deal with space marines. They are not really tactical, but when push comes to shove, they will break enemy lines and for sure, they will dominate other space marine chapters or legions. Just look at what they did to Thousand Suns. It wasn't that pretty of a picture. Also, their command structure is bizarre because of various wolf lords making their squads as separate entities, rather than just fighting as a unified force creating confusion on battlefield, adding extra pepper to their shock tactics. Imperial Fists are like mirror version of Iron Warriors. They focus more on siege defenses. That is the reason why both legions have such rivalry because of how similar yet dramatically different they both are. If the Imperial Fists wouldn't be responsible for the fortifications of the Imperial Palace, I doubt that Loyalists would be able to hold out as long as they did. In a sense, they are incredibly reliable, because when conquering worlds for the Imperium, they would construct fortresses and leave garrisons behind on these worlds to ensure that they remain loyal. Next up, the Night Lords. Many people think that their special ability is stealth, which is wrong. Yes, they are stealthy when needed, but that is not their main strength. They were able to conquer worlds almost without spilling any blood. They would create terror in local population and their rulers by skinning few people alive and then displaying it for everyone to see. They would literally scare planets into compliance. 
Many worlds stopped their rebellions and surrendered whenever they heard that Night Lords were on the way to deal with their bullshit. Their reputation was their weapon and they gave grown-up men nightmares. It is weird because while they committed the most heinous war crimes, they inflicted the least amount of death and destruction in the Imperium. We all kind of view Blood Angels as these noble shining beacons of hope, but before they met Sanguinius who literally tamed them, they were berserkers, worse than world eaters, even still relying on shock and awe tactics, punching in enemy lines with chainsaws and jump packs. They most of the time focus on going after enemy leaders, knowing well that if you cut the head of the snake, the body will lose control. Iron Hands had a really good relationship with Mechanicus, and they were obsessed with becoming transable, choosing to remove their body parts to replace them with mechanical augmentations. Really stupid move if you ask me, but that made them more durable, at least physically, than other legions. Iron Hands were considered as one of the strongest legions back in the days, if it wasn't for Ferus, who autistically charged the enemy lines. They were just an angry bunch and I think they excelled at the frontline assaults, literally just punching their enemies in the ground. For World Eaters, the main vibe is to hit it until it has no pulse, and it goes both ways, either them or their enemy. They are relentless, and while many think of them as mindless berserkers, they have actually a lot of skill involved, making them especially deadly in melee combat. Just look at Karn, he doesn't need mutations to kill people. In the Unification Wars era, they were called Warhounds, and they were kept in reserve in case some Imperial forces decided to rebel. They were meant to deal with disloyal subjects. I think it is quite obvious, but Ultramarines have little bit of everything. They are not masters of anything at all, well maybe accounting, but besides that, nothing else. Still, they are good at everything. They are very versatile and can do anything that needs to be done. They were the largest and the best equipped legion due to their nerd skills being able to have constant uninterrupted flow of logistics creating stable supply lines for the legion. They are one of the most reasonable legions, if not the most reasonable, because they comply with battle doctrines and tactics, choosing efficiency over heroics. Death Guard main strength is their physical durability. These guys can take a beating, literally. Some of the injuries that Death Guard Astartes have suffered and survived would have killed a regular Space Marine from a different legion. They are also resistant to poisonous and toxic environments. Even within their legion, use of radiation weaponry was a big vibe. You know, the weapons that give you that Chernobyl tan. Back in the days, before they were reunited with Mortarion, they were called Dusk Raiders. They always attacked right at nightfall, making their signature move. Honestly, I liked them more back then. They had a really cool paint scheme, having grey unpainted power armor, while their right hand was painted crimson red, symbolizing that they are the bloody hand of the Emperor. Thousand Sons are strongly psychic legion, what they couldn't make up in numbers, they definitely made up in their sheer warp firepower. In one-on-one -on -one duel, a Thousand Sons Psyker could literally erase any Astartes from their existence due to their abilities. These guys are just too overpowered. The only reason why they were beaten by Space Wolves was because Sisters of Silence nullified their abilities. Technically, blanks are their only weakness. Luna Wolves, or as some might say Sons of Horus, focused on decapitation tactics. Most of conflicts were like distractions, while a plan to kill off enemy leaders was enacted. They tend to enter in the middle of fights in drop pods wreaking havoc. But on all accounts they had a similar versatility as Ultramarines, mostly because of Horus being a genius strategist capable of using his legion for any task. Word Bearers was easily one of the most powerful legions, strictly sticking to battle doctrines. They were slow in their compliance process, but after getting backslapped by the Emperor, they became ruthless and their compliance rate skyrocketed. After the whole humiliation, they overwhelmed any opponent with sheer numbers and strength. Some might say this is a weakness, but I see Salamander's humanity as their biggest strength. They are the rare space marines that value human life. They are literal hero Astartes going extra mile to save civilians. Also, they as a legion were expert craftsmen with Vulcan being at top of the food chain when it came to creating mastercrafted weapons. That is why they have some of the most unique weapons out there. Also, these guys love fire, some type of barbecue fetish because they tend to cook their enemies alive. As a legion, they are highly self-reliant, being able to craft most of their gear by themselves which is really unique for space marines. Raven Guard are best at stealth tactics. They are the strongest when striking from the shadows. Just look at Corvus Corax. In Warp, he has become a living shadow. Even Night Lords got creeped out about how stealthy these guys are, so that is saying something. 
Because they heavily use jump pack squads, they excel at decapitation strikes, easily killing enemy leadership. Even their power armor is crafted in a way so it would exude less noise than regular Starty's power armor, and they possess a unique stealthing technology that they haven't shared with other legions. And the last, Hydra, the Alpha Legion. Everyone knows that they are the best when it comes to infiltration, subterfuge and spying, capable of embedding their own Astartes in different legions and chapters without them ever realizing it. They heavily use regular human agents to create massive information and spying networks, allowing them to be a step ahead of everyone at all times. This is the only legion that has conquered the worlds without having a single Astartes present, which is really overpowered. Due to their low casualty rates, their legion size is still huge and if push comes to shove, they could probably on a small scale wage war on the Imperium, but that would be out of their character. The downside for them is the fact that they don't know what is right and what is wrong, when even battle brothers keep secrets from each other, creating this confusion within the whole legion. Many times they have sabotaged themselves thinking that it is a part of some grander design. I'm sure even they have no clue who the hell they are fighting for. Well, that kind of sums up strengths and specializations of all Starty's legions. When looking from this perspective, I actually really like Alpha Legion, only if they weren't so goddamn retarded all the time, creating problems for themselves. Which is your favorite legion? Maybe I missed some of the legion's strengths? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like and subscribe to my channel with the notifications on so you wouldn't miss my latest upload. Join my Patreon for just $2 a month to get access to some of the most amazing, high definition, never seen before Warhammer 40,000 artworks that you can download and use as you want. New art for October is up in the Patreon, so go check it out. Every month we post something new there, so I promise you will love it. Remember to join Discord to show your memes, and with that in mind, I'll see you next time. Nerd.